Trinity Sunday begins on page 255 of the prayer book. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is Genesis 1, 1 through Genesis chapter 2, verse 4a. Um, eagerly enough, it begins on page 1 of the Pew Bible. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the water. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dawn in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land to earth, and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. 
and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dawn of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dawn of the sky to give light to the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dawn of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Then there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dawn of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to every living thing, everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Psalm 8, found on page 592 of the Sherba. book. Let us read it responsibly by whole purpose. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Now the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, 
the Son of Man, that you should seek him out. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Amen.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Some years ago, in a New Yorker magazine article entitled Creation Myth, Xerox Park, Apple, and the Truth About Innovation, Malcolm Gladwell traced the story of how Steve Jobs took the idea of the computer mouse from the Xerox Corporation and applied it in his own computers, thereby launching the Apple Empire. The reason for calling the article creation <coughs> myth is that Gladwell wanted to tell the story in a way that showed that the creation of the computer mouse, we're all familiar with computer mice, um, was not, strictly speaking, the work of the Xerox labs. It began there, but what Xerox invented as the computer mouse wasn't anything like what actually came out in conjunction with Apple computers. Rather, the computer mouse, as we have come to know it and use it and click on it, um, was actually a collaboration of Xerox, Steve Jobs, and a man named Dean Foley, who took the idea of the mouse and made it practical so that you could produce it for $15 a piece as opposed to about $5,000 In other words, the creation myth is the simplification of the notion of creation itself. That it is a self-contained and self-sufficient activity at the beginning of product development. Rather, says Gladwell, creation is an ongoing series of events involving different kinds of innovation at different stages. So you can't actually say you understand the creation of the computer mouse until you see what all of the players Now, the Christian doctrine of creation is a bit like that as well. Sometimes we fall into the practice of treating creation as an event or a self-contained and complete series of events at the beginning of time, and we treat the account of creation in the first chapter of Genesis, which we heard this morning, as all we really need to know about the subject. But that is not the orthodox Christian understanding of creation at all. It is a simplification which, if we let it stand, raises a serious theological problem. And the problem is this. If creation is complete and self-contained, then we're going to need someone other than the creator and maker of this world to come and rescue us from the mess that creation has become. Now, that view was, in fact, put forward in the century after Jesus Christ by a heretic named Marcy. Marcion looked at the world and he saw that it was filled with cruelty and sickness. And so Marcion posited that the God of creation, what he called the God of the Old Testament, needed to be replaced with a better, more spiritual and perfect God who would rescue us from the material world and liberate our souls from corruption. Now, that's a plausible view, perhaps, but it is not the Christian view. The Christian view of creation that it is that it is an ongoing work of the Holy Trinity, and furthermore, that the same God who creates is the God who redeems, and the same God who shares creative power with us. Let's look more closely at the 19 Creed, which we're going to say in a few minutes, and what it actually says about creation. The first article states, We believe in God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. But we can't stop there. If we read on, we'll see that creation is mentioned four times in the Creed. As Marion Mix, who taught theology for decades at Virginia Theological Seminary and was known affectionately to students and colleagues as Mixi, has observed, four assertions of the Creed bear on the question, who creates? It says, first, that we believe in one God who is the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. But it goes on to say that we believe in God the Son, through whom all things were made. In the third 
third paragraph that adds the gospel spirit is the Lord and giver of life. And finally, the creed ends with look the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. To put it briefly, the creed says that creation is past, present, and future, that God isn't through with creation yet. Indeed, when we read through the whole of the Bible and don't just stop at chapter 1, we see that God not only creates, but also renews creation. The God of the Bible is not static and changing and unchanging, creating the world and then letting it run on its own. Rather, the biblical God is flexible, responsive, and creative. As Charles Wesley said in our opening hymn, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, we ask God to finish creation. Creation needs to be perfected. Finish. openness to allowing us to participate actively in the creative process, something which is clearly <coughs> in the first chapter of Genesis. For what else can it possibly mean to be created in the image of God than this, to share in the activity modeled by God, making things and seeing that they are good. Now, we don't do that as well as God. But God takes our mistakes and finds a way to use them and incorporate them into creation itself. God makes and remakes the world, and the same God <coughs> also redeems and reshapes the world. As the creed and the first chapter of John's Gospel assert, the God revealed in Jesus is the God who made everything that is from before time and now enters directly into the creation itself and assumes life as a fellow creature. One way we have traditionally affirmed God's connection to creation is through contemplation of the glories of creation, the vastness and complexity and regularity of the cosmos. As the psalmist says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And we saw that in Psalm 8 that we read today. But the meaning of is not limited to the kind of gazing that the ancients did by looking into the night sky. Our understanding of the glory of the heavens is now enriched by the creation of things like the Hubble telescope, so that remarkable new images come from our own creative engagement with the creation. This greater understanding of the Christian doctrine of creation is beautifully and succinctly expressed in the opening verse of King 580. God who stretched the spangled heavens, infinite in time and place, flung the suns in burning radiance through the silent fields of space. We, your children, in your likeness, share inventive power with you. Great creator, still creating, show what you yet may do. That, in a nutshell, is the Christian doctrine of creation, as set forth in our creed, and which it is especially appropriate to affirm on this day, Trinity Sunday, when we uphold our ancient conviction that creation is the ongoing work of the Holy Trinity, and not just something accomplished at the beginning of time. So let's all forsake the creation myth, and celebrate the complete Christian doctrine of creation and our own place within God's creative and loving work. God isn't finished with us yet. Amen.
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one the holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers for the people are found on page 392 and used in form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors. And for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop. For Sam and Jennifer, our bishops. For Brooks, our sovereign today. And for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Praying for your prayer list. We pray especially for J.D. Griffin, Griffin, Sandy Marks, Jim Jeffries, Paul McHugh, Jean Ann Brown. Joey and Carly Pertoy, Liam Snipes, Rick Dance, Bill and Peggy Dance, Shane Pertoy, Danny Thomas, Benny Weary, Adrian, Zach Pollock, Butch England, and Bishop Michael Curry. And others for whom our prayers are desired Clyde Martin, Barry Taylor, Nate Tyler, Mary Martin, Reverend Dave Lamazarius, the people of Ukraine. And I invite you to add your own position, petitions either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Remember especially Roger Setzer and Thomas Richards. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy, mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins.
sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Peace, Megan.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and air archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> According to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto you, Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Andrew and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ.